Hey everyone, I hope you're having a beautiful Friday. It's a beautiful day outside, so I thought I'd come outside and do our lesson today. We're going to talk a little bit about water pollution and keeping the water clean and keeping the watersheds clean. So I have a special guest with me today. It's who our story is going to be about. His name's Fred, and he's a fish. Tell everybody, hi Fred. Hello, how are you? Fred said hello. Well, this is Fred's home right here. It's going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze. I didn't have a clear bowl to put Fred in, but here is his home. There he is. He's all nice in his little home. He's a little scrunched up, but that's okay. All right, so Fred lives in a clean, protected area, and he's lived here all of his life. The water's always been clean. He's not had to worry about people coming in, catching him, fishing and stuff. Life has just been wonderful. But Fred is like so many people, so many little kids and so many teenagers. They want to know what's out there in that big wide world. So Fred decides one day that he is going to go traveling down the river. Because there's a river that runs into his little protected area. So he decides he's going to go through that river and see just what is there in that big old wide world. So he takes off on his little journey. Now the night before Fred took his journey, it had rained, okay? So just remember that at every stop that he makes, okay? Or every place that he passes by. <clears throat> okay, so as he's going down the river and he's just having a good old time, you know, the water's all nice and clean and he's all happy in there. So he goes and he swims by a farm. He is absolutely amazed. He has never seen a farm before. He's never seen a tractor. He sees cows and he sees horses and he's like, wow, this is awesome. So the farmer the day before had plowed up his field. He was fixing to plant some corn. And now remember, it rained last night, right? So after the farmer had plowed his fields, that rain caused some soil erosion and it went into the river where he is swimming by. So there goes the dirt. So, as you can see, the water's a little bit more dirty than it was, but you know, Fred's doing okay. Sometimes the water got stirred up where he lived at in his little protected area, so dirt don't really bother him too much. So he decided he would keep going. So, he goes and swims by a housing development lots of houses there people who love to have beautiful yards so these people of course wanted to have these beautiful yards i'm gonna set this down for just a minute i'll lift it back up and show you here in just a minute so the day before they fertilized their yard now remember it rained last night right so all of the rain washed that fertilizer into the river so now, because all that fertilizer has been washed into the river time and time and time again, it made the plants in that river grow really fast. And then when the plants started to die, they started using up some of the oxygen and stuff that Fred needs to live. Okay, so they're using up Fred's oxygen. So Fred's not doing too bad. He's okay, but he's not doing too bad. Um, so he decides he's going to keep going. Surely there's more to it than just a farm and a housing development. So he keeps swimming and he comes to a mall. Fred has never seen a mall before in his life. He had never seen such a big building and he even saw a place called Bass Pro and he wondered what that was. Thought maybe he might need to go in there. Fred, I think you need to stay out of Bass Pro. Okay, so he goes and there's this huge parking lot with all of these cars and he's never seen so many cars in all of his life. Because remember, he came from a little protected area. So he'd hardly ever seen a car. He'd never seen so many cars in a parking lot. Well, all of those cars in those parking lots leak oil and gas. Now, what did it do last night? It rained. So, some of that oil and that gas goes into the river with Fred. Can you see right there some of that syrup that's settling down on their bottom right there? And then you've got all that dirt and everything. So Fred is not doing so hot right now. It's making it a little bit harder for him to move. A little bit harder for him to open his gills up and breathe. But he decides he's going to keep going. He wants to see. There has to be other exciting things 
at the end of the river for him. So he keeps going and he swims beside of an interstate. And there's a bridge on this interstate. Now, it rained last night, right? But the temperatures were kind of cool and the, the Department of Transportation kind of thought maybe the roads might freeze, so they had salted the bridge. Now, all of that rain washed all of that salt into the river. Do you think salt's good for fish? Freshwater fish? <laughs> Because Fred's a freshwater fish. I don't think it's too good for him. You know what happens when you put salt on slugs, don't you? They shrivel up. I don't know if that happens to fish or not, but I'm sure it's not good for him. All right, so he decides, now I'm going to keep going. I want to see what's out in this big wide world. So he swims by the city park. Now, at the city park, lots of people go and they play and they eat snacks and they have picnics. A lot of people, though, they forget that when they're finished with their snacks and their picnicking, they forget to pick up their trash and then they litter. So, it had rained last night, right? So, that rain picked up that trash and carried it into the river. So, let me show you right there. Maybe you can, ooh, maybe I can tilt it. All you can see is my shirt. There, maybe. <laughs> I can't get it. Okay, sorry. Well, anyways, there's trash floating. Maybe you can see it. I'm trying to tilt it where you can see it. All right. So, anyways, there's trash floating in the river. So, now he's got all this pollution in the river, but he's also trying to dodge trash, too. Poor Fred. But he says, I've come this far. I've just got to see what else is there. So, he keeps going, and he swims by some factories. And these factories, there are lots of guidelines for factories, especially if they're located on rivers that they are not supposed to dump their waste into the river. But these factories are not abiding by the guidelines. They are dumping their waste into the river. So, oh, let me get this waste fixed up just a little bit more. It's not quite pollution-y enough. Let me stir it up just a little bit. So these factories are not abiding by the guidelines and they are dumping all of their pollution into the river. Look at all that stuff up there at the top. Poor Fred, it's getting harder and harder for him to breathe. The water's getting so dirty, if you can see that. It's getting harder to see him in the jar. So the water's getting dirtier. It's getting harder for him to breathe. Oh, he's trying so hard to open up his little gills and breathe. Just getting harder for him. He decides he's going to push on because he knows the end of the river is just in sight. And he wants to know what's at the end. So he decides to keep going. So he goes past a wastewater treatment plant. Now we have one of those here in Cock County on the industrial road down there. So you guys know how that smells sometimes so this wastewater treatment plant is taking the, the the sewage and they're getting all that sludgy slimy stuff and they are separating it to clean the water and so all that sludgy slimy stuff is being thrown into the river so there goes all that nasty sludgy slimy being thrown into the river look at poor fred how's he doing Poor Fred, he's not doing too good. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. Well, he keeps going because at the end, he can see the end of the river. He says, I just got to know what's at the end of the river. So he goes down and at the very end of the river where it goes into another river, there is a hazardous waste factory. And they have barrels of toxic chemicals sitting outside the factory. Now, what did it do last night? It rained. So, all those toxic chem chemicals that were leaking out of that barrel got washed into the river. Now, if they're toxic to you and me, they're definitely toxic to a little fish who's a lot smaller than us. Because the smaller the animal, the less that they are able to withstand. So, let me get Fred out of the jar here. And look at poor Fred. See how he's soaked up? all of this pollution. He's kind of sticky feeling from the syrup. There's stuff on his tail. 
There's stuff all through his body. He has soaked all that stuff up. So Fred is really, really sick right now. But the good thing is, is that I know how to take care of Fred. I give him a good bath and he'll be okay. But the point is, is that whatever we do on the land, it is going to end up in the water eventually. And a lot of times when we're in classes and we're talking to kids, we talk about that, you know, when we litter something here, even in Cock County, that that can end up in the ocean, even though we're all the way in Cock County and it takes us six, seven hours to get to the ocean. That stuff can end up there because rain will, if it, especially if it rains hard enough, will pick up that trash and carry it into a river. And all rivers are connected, streams are connected and stuff. So it'll eventually end up and find its way into the ocean. So that's why we need to be careful not to litter things on the ground. Not only is it bad for the animals on land and bad for humans, but it can also affect the aquatic life as well. So we need to be mindful of that and be careful of that. So um, one thing that we also teach kids is that everyone lives in a watershed. So anywhere you live, you live in a watershed. And so you need to keep your watershed clean because if the watershed's clean, then your water's gonna be clean too. And if your watershed is clean on top, the surface water's gonna be clean and the water underground is gonna be clean too. And a lot of us have well water and spring water and we need our water to be clean because that's our drinking source. All right, so we always do a really fun activity. So we're gonna make a fish and I'm just gonna tell you real quick what you need. You'll need a toilet paper roll because everybody has toilet paper rolls, right? Um, and you will need um, some markers. You might want to paint yours. I'm gonna show you mine. I've already finished mine. Um, you might want to paint it or color it. And you want some scrap pieces of paper or some kind of tissue paper. I use gift tissue because I've told you in other videos that um, anytime I go to a party and people want to throw that stuff away, I'm grabbing it up because I use it for crafts and all kinds of stuff. So I used gift tissue on mine. All right, so I painted my fish a nice orange color. I took the back side of my toilet paper roll and I bent it in just like that. And I ended up using hot glue because the Elmer's glue was not working too good. But maybe if you put Elmer's glue on it and set something down on top of it to let it dry, it would do better. Um, I even had to do that with my hot glue. I had to glue it and then set something down on top of it to let it stick. So anyways, if you if you think that you need hot glue parents or children, make sure that you ask your parents to get help with that because hot glue can burn you, okay? So you take after you've painted it, squish it in like that and glue it. Cut you out some fins and, and a tail fin. So here's my little, oops. I set it down where Fred's stuff was at. It's got wet. Here's his little side fins and his little tail fin. And I drew little scales on his back. And I used buttons for eyes instead of googly eyes because a lot of us have buttons laying around. I was trying to make it as recyclable as possible or reusable, either one. So I glued on little button eyes. And this is its little open mouth. It's like those schooling fish you see at the aquarium that you know, have their mouth open and they're grabbing the stuff as they swim around. So anyways... That's my little fish. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed this today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and stay well. Miss Greta will be here with you Monday to do an activity. And I'll see you guys back on Tuesday. Have a good day. Bye.